Welcome back to episode two of the sandwich series where I'm on a mission to find the best sandwiches from all around the world and teach you how to make every single component from scratch. We are breaking down the art form of the sandwich and we're going in deep. We're gonna really focus on every single element so you can make them at home. And if you've been following my Instagram, Life by Mike G, you've been seeing some teasers being thrown out this week for episode two. And a few of you uh, nailed it. Most of you were way off, but we are doing the Katsu Sando, which is a Japanese sandwich. And it's really like a comfort food in Japan. You see this at high-end restaurants. You see this, you know, just at regular like convenience stores. So it has all of the elements of the sort of late night munchy creation. Like to me, someone definitely created this when they were drunk and then put it on the menu and it just caught fire. Holding everything together, you've got a, just a nice fluffy and chewy white bread. Traditionally, that would be a Japanese milk bread. Then you've got the katsu part and katsu means cutlet and that is generally a pork cutlet. That's the traditional meat they use. And then you've got the katsu sauce, which gets real weird. It's like this sort of late night barbecue creation. And then you can add a fresh element like cabbage, which is very traditional in the katsu sando. So for my katsu sando, I'm actually switching it up a little bit. I'm going with the wagyu katsu sando, which is super popular on Instagram. And just with, you know, sort of the influx of people learning about Kobe beef and just really high-end beef. You see these Wagyu katsu sandos and I really wanted to try that out. So for the bread, I'm trying out the traditional style Japanese milk bread for the first time. Then for the actual katsu part, I'm going in deep on this one. I invested in some high-end A5 Wagyu beef so you guys get to see how that turns out soon. And then for the katsu sauce, I brought in a little help on that one, someone who is an expert in making all things sauce and especially barbecue sauce. And then I will add just a little fresh element to finish it off. So let's get into the building of this maybe. So the first thing you need to do when making Japanese milk bread is make a thing called a tongzong. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Or you'll see it called a starter, which it certainly is not a starter. It's, it's like a roux and it's supposed to help soften your final product. So what I did was I added some flour to a pot and then I added a little bit of milk and I just stirred that around on a nice low heat for about five minutes until that really thickened up, almost like a roux. And then I just let that cool. Then you have to activate your yeast. So I warmed up just a little bit of milk to about 90 to 100 degrees. I added my yeast packet. Then I added in the sugar and you know, this all depends on how sweet you actually want your bread. And then I let that activate for about 10 minutes until it was nice and bubbly. Then to a big bowl, I added my yeast. I added some beaten eggs, poured in my flour. Then I added that cool down mashed potato looking mixture, a little bit of salt and just mix that up till it started to come together. So just start kneading that out and just sort of get it formed together and then you can let it sit and just let those glutens relax a little bit and then you can come back to it and this is where you add your butter in which gives it a nice brioche type of taste. It's gonna be hard to knead at first with that butter but eventually this will come together and I just knead that for about five minutes until you have a nice supple dough. Now let that rise in a bowl for about an hour, an hour and a half until it doubles in size. And then you can deflate it and you can start working your dough. So I just put that out on a board on some flour. I chop that into multiple pieces and you need about three decent sized pieces for one loaf.
You're gonna take a nice loaf pan and just spray that down so it doesn't stick. And then just pop those in so they have enough space to rise because you're gonna let that sit now for about an hour until it just rises above the edge of the actual loaf pan. Now set your oven to 350 degrees and I just beat up an egg and a little bit of milk to brush that on so it gets a nice golden crust and bake that for just around 30, mine was about actually 25 minutes until your bread thermometer reads you know, around 200 to 210 degrees. And then you just have the most perfect bread ever. And this was the first time I made it and it came out amazing. I'll definitely be making this bread more often, but it's just a great sort of combination of like a brioche, but then it has that nice milky element, really great bread. And what I learned was this bread is actually the way they traditionally make Japanese panko breadcrumbs, which is what we need for the next element, the katsu element. So we are going to take this bread and make some breadcrumbs with it. Not all of it, because we need it for the sandwich as well, but I've got some extra. So I took a piece and just ripped it up and threw it right into the food processor. And then I just pulsed it up a little bit, making sure not to go too fine because panko breadcrumbs, you don't wanna get too crazy. They're super light and airy and a little bigger as well. Then I just poured out the bread onto a baking sheet and baked that at 300 degrees for about, I would say 20 to 30 minutes until they are nice and dried out and crispy. So we're ready for the real star of the show, the katsu part. And normally this is done with pork. That's the traditional meat they use. So you can totally do that. You could use chicken. You still get an amazing sandwich with that. But I wanted to really push it and I wanted to try one of these Wagyu sandwiches that I have been seeing. And I don't recommend that anyone go out there and buy some really expensive beef but I just had a calling. I wanted to do it for the video and I wanted to try it myself. And if I got it in a restaurant in NYC, it probably would have been double the cost. But I actually went to a place called Japan Premium Meats in New York, and it's one of the only places you can get this quality of meat. But the way Wagyu works is it's actually graded, and A5 is the highest, and this place has A5 meat. This, this one is 130 per pound. Mm -hmm. And how much is this? It's the same price. 130, okay. And how much do you need to buy? Can you, uh, you mean the Can minimum? you buy a pound? Yeah, is there minimum a minimum? Minimum is a half pound. Half pound, okay, I can do that. <laughs> it is pricey and I was so upset because you know, I only could afford a very small amount and they had this big chunk, so they were gonna cut me just a little sliver, which obviously wouldn't, I'm not making a cheesesteak, I'm not chopping this up, I need a chunky piece. But then I saw this one little like scrappy piece they had and they actually sold that to me, so it was a little bit better because I, I seriously, if I wanted a, a chunky piece of that one ribeye, I probably would have spent $600, which was not gonna happen. So you can see this is insanely marbled and who knows what they're doing to these cows, but they are fatty and that's why this sandwich is so good because it's tender, but I wanted to slice it up and actually make it nice and square. So I just did a little butchery on this piece. And it was crazy because it was it was melting on the cutting board. I didn't know what was going on. I'm not used to that fat content. I actually had to put it in the freezer so it stopped melting. And then I just made a little batter of egg and flour, beat that up, dipped that Wagyu right into the egg, and then into my panko bread crumbs and just coated that really nicely. Now to fry this up, this was a little nerve wracking because I only had one shot. <laughs> I had one shot to get this right. So I got my oil to about 370 degrees because I knew it would drop a little. Threw in the coated Wagyu and let that fry for about, I would say it was eight minutes. And I tried to keep it right around 350 degrees. And I was checking it with a thermometer. I really wasn't getting readings that I could trust. So I just went by intuition and I thought it was ready at this point. I let that drain and hoped for the best. So when I was researching the katsu sauce, I found it pretty funny because 
it was a sauce that I feel like Josh invented. Like I've seen him make this exact sauce and he is the master of barbecue sauce. Like, he can turn anything into a goddamn barbecue sauce. So I figured he would take it over from here. Why thank you Bobby, I am the barbecue sauce master so I appreciate the compliment. So after doing some research for tonkatsu sauce, otherwise known as bulldog sauce, I came to the indefinite conclusion that this is probably something I invented in a past life so that I could enjoy it now and when you see the recipe you'll understand. There's no cooking involved, it's just grabbing what you got in the fridge, mixing it and having something delicious. So the first thing that we do is we take about a third or a half cup or so of ketchup and squeeze that into a nice bowl. Then you take one tablespoon of soy sauce and just livy divvy that in. Then two tablespoons of Worcester, 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 Worcestershire sauce. About a tablespoon of mirin, which is a Japanese cooking wine. I used a tablespoon of honey. You could also use some sort of sugar. One teaspoon of Dijon mustard or some kind of mustardy experience that you love. And then I grated in some fresh ginger and garlic. And of course, if you wanted to, you could cook that down first, or you could add ginger and garlic powder, but I just like the freshness of the old grate. Makes it super simple, very little cleanup. Back to you, Johnski, and uh, it's been great knowing you. And thank you, Brother Josh. And the last element we need to do is just shave up some fresh cabbage, completely optional, but I like the freshness. And then I slice up my fresh milk bread, toast that in some butter so it's nice and crispy on both sides. And then we assemble this thing, one piece of Japanese milk bread. Then we hit it with that katsu sauce then some cabbage, and then our delicious Wagyu cutlet right there, Wagyu katsu, and then a little bit more sauce, and then of course top it with your milk bread. So traditionally they slice off the crust, so I, I followed lead on that one, and then they slice it up into a few pieces, and that is it. Okay, the most expensive sandwich I've ever made in my life and probably will ever make in my life. The official taste test. I've let everything cool a little bit. I think that's good to sort of, you know, taste all of those flavors, let the meat kind of settle. Here we go. Oh boy, I, I, I took the, the center cut. I feel like that's the one. That doesn't even taste like beef, to be honest. I mean, it does taste like beef, but the texture is so different. When you bite into it, the fat kind of explodes in your mouth and it's, it's so soft that the key element is just the softness of everything with the fatty beef. It tastes, it resembles like a fast food burger, but just on the most gourmet level. Obviously this is insanely expensive and I don't recommend you going and buying this stuff, but it does make sense as a sandwich. I can say that. It works well. It's not just a gimmick. Like if Wagyu was, you know, $5 a pound, this sandwich would be everywhere. Episode two in the books, and that was just pure insanity. I don't think I will ever make that again, nor will I probably ever buy A5 Wagyu again, but you never really know. And I do have some leftover beef, one. I feel like I wanna make some skewers, and I also have some leftover sandwich, so the question is who is worthy of the most expensive sandwich ever? My wife isn't the biggest beef fan, but I feel like she'll definitely be taking some bites of this one. But remember to follow me at Life by Mike G on Instagram because I'll be teasing out future episodes in this series. And of course, comment in below with the sandwiches that you want to see in this series. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, wow. Brought you a snack. Can't wait. You're the only uh, Every bite of that is like. $10, like I don't think I'm worthy of this. <laughs> you're, you're, you're Do I deserve this? One. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Are, even when it's like cold, it just like melts in your mouth. It melts, yeah. Mm. How good is it? <laughs> that was that was a $15 bite. I should have went for the $20 bite. <laughs> <laughs>